Do you own a new tech machinery SSR machine? Check out this video to find out how to change out the profile. Hello everyone, this is Tim LaGuardia, Assistant Service Manager here at New Tech Machinery. Today I'll be showing you how to do a profile changeover on an SSR Junior panel machine. As you can see, here at New Tech Machinery, we, we practice a lot of safety. So when you first come to your machine, you're gonna have all the covers and lids on it. You have warning labels on the shear. You will be removing the lids to do this. So please work in front of the shear work behind the shear, but never work through the shear. We do place uh, the proper lockout tag out on the power plug for the machine so that when you're working on the machine, no one can plug power into it. Now that your machine is safe and locked out, we'll proceed to remove the covers and get started on our profile changeover. The tools that you will need for the profile changeover include a ratchet with a quarter inch bit on it, 3 16 T-handle or Allen, half inch socket for the shear dies, and a tape measure so you can square up your profile. We'll be following the steps in the manual. You can find the manual by clicking on the link below. The next step in doing a profile changeover on your SSR is to remove the old profile out of the machine or the profile that you're changing out. First, we're gonna start by removing the D-bolts that are located on each profile section. And you do that by unscrewing them and just taking them all the way out. Once you have all the bolts removed, the next step is to try and get the profile out without banging it on the frame. And usually you can just go one direction and right out the top. And there's your first section out. Once you removed each section, place it in a safe place out of the way where it's protected. Now we're gonna move on to the next section and do the same thing. Remove the D-bolts. And once again, once you start removing the middle bolt, make sure you secure the profile section so it does not fall to the ground. Just like the first one, you just need to find a safe place to get it through the frame and out. Once you're finished with the right side, you can move now to the left side and do the same process. Take out the first three sections and place them in a safe location. Once the profile is completely removed from the machine, the next step you will be needing to do is to remove the shear dies off of the shear for that profile. Please keep in mind that the shear is very, very dangerous. You want to always be working in front of the shear or behind the shear. You never want to work through the shear or place your hands through it. You will also want to make sure that the handle is in the back position, which means that the shear blade is in the up position and secure with the pin lock in place. Remove the shear dies by loosening the bolts in front and removing them. You can leave them finger loose, that way it's easier to hold on to. Hold on to the dies as you're removing the bolts. Place the bolts in a, in, once again in a safe location. Don't reach your hands through the shear to do this. For this particular profile changeover, we will be putting in the FFR 100 fastening flange profile. The first step after removing your profile completely is to set the C dimension on your entry guide. First of all, by looking in your manual, looking up the C dimension, and in this case, the C dimension is 11 and 13 sixteenths. And to get that dimension, you will hook that on the back side of the entry guide upright and measure to the outside plate of your entry guide. So I will loosen this using a 3 16 Allen wrench and moving it to 11 and 13 16 and then snugging up your entry guide. Once the right guide is set, our next process is to set the left entry guide to the material that you will be using running through the machine. In this case, we have a piece of 24 gauge, 20 inch wide steel then you want to cut a sample piece of it and always trim your corners. That way the material feeds through the machine safely. You'll loosen up the left entry guide and place your coil in the machine, 
to where it's flush up against the right side guide. Gently push your left guide up to the panel. Don't put a lot of pressure on it and then just snug the bolt up. What you're looking for is in and out with no side to side movement. The next step is to install the next profile that you are getting ready to put in. Like I said, in this case, it's the FFR 100. I always start with the right side with R1. On all your sections, there will be a stamp that not only contains what profile it is, but what section you're getting ready to put in. This is how I know that I am putting in the first section on the right side because it's labeled R1. When placing the first section in, just like taking it out, please be very gentle when going in. Try not to bang it around too much. You need to make sure that you're, the bigger holes here and here are lined up over the D-bolt screws and also that these three here are your A bolts. They need to be lined up over the threaded holes. Once they, they are, then go ahead and start your bolts in there. Always lift up on the station before tightening up and you are lifting up and pulling back so that the entire section is flush up against the mounting bar. So go ahead and snug up the D bolt as you're holding it and then proceed on to do the other ones. Next, we will proceed on and install section R2. I am looking to make sure that it says not only FF100, but I got the R2 section. Go ahead and install R2. Please be careful. Now we'll move on to section R3. The next step is to set R1 section to your entry guide using the A dimension in your manual. You do that by loosening the D bolts and then this section will slide back and forth on these two rails and then you can align it using this tape measure on this platform to the A dimension in your manual. In this case, our A dimension is one and a sixteenth of an inch. And you will see that will provide this first rail to slide on your rails. Once you have your A dimension set on one and a sixteenth with the outside of the entry guide plate, go ahead and just snug up the one end of your D bolt, like so. Once you get the initial D bolt snug down, you will want to run a tape from the end of R1 to the opposite side to your fishing line or wherever it may be placed and get a dimension off of that. Right now I'm running at about 27 and 5 eighths and I'm going to take that dimension and come down to the other end and measure off of the other side of R1 to the fishing line to make sure that I have the same dimension. Once you know you have your same dimension, you can finish tighten up both D bolts. Now that you've done R1, we can move to R2 and line up section R2 to R1. And the way you do that is once again, you're going to loosen the D bolts. All profiles are different, but in this case, this one has a spacer at the end of the R1 section. You will be lining up R2 flush on the inside with the spacer block, not anywhere else. So you wanna be flush here, like so. Once you have that, then you will tighten up this end of the D-bolt and then go ahead and do your same thing where you measure off either end to your string. Now we will tighten up the other end of the D-bolt. Now we will move on and do the same process for R3. And once again, the end of R2 has a spacer here. So you will be lining it up flush on the inside. And then you will proceed to tighten one end of the D-bolt again. So now I'm gonna get a quick measurement off of this end. Once you've determined that the R3 section is in there square, you will now proceed to tighten the other end of your D-bolt. Now that we have the right side in and square, we will now proceed to the left side and start with L1. Make sure that you see the stamp where it's labeled your profile, FF100, and then L1. Now we will move on to section L2. Now we will be moving on to the next section, 
And in this case with the FF100 on the left side, there is four sections. So we will next go to L3. Now we will move on to the last section, which is L4. Once the left side is in, our next step is to line up the L1 with the entry guide using our B dimension. Our FF100 left side should be set to a one inch B position on your entry guide plate. If you look down the outside of this plate here, you'll see that we need to line this plate up about on one inch. Once again, just like the right side, you will loosen up the D bolts. And I'm just going to gently slide this section in until we're approximately lined up on the one inch mark. And then I'm gonna snug up this first D bolt. Get a quick measurement to your string. Now we will move on to the alignment of section L2. And just like the right side, what we're doing is the end of L2 has a spacer block on it that we will need to make flush on the inside, not on the outside. So I'm just gently tapping it, and then I'm gonna snug up this D-bolt. So now what we're gonna do is just square up L3. Start by loosening the D-bolts. You will see that there is no spacer here. So now this will be flush on the inside of the angle rails. Once this is flush, go ahead and snug up one end of your D-bolt. Once the profile is installed, the next step is to set your shear dies. In order to do this, we need to sheet feed a piece of material in the machine approximately four to five feet long up to the shear and then align your shear dies from there. Properly run the machine and adjust the shear dies. We will have to remove the lockout tag out. So now to, to sheet feed a piece in there, I am going to cut the corners of the material. Once the corners are cut, you could go ahead and feed your material into your entry guides and up to the first set of drive rollers. Once you're into the first set of drive rollers, go ahead and jog, slowly jog the machine in. Once you get the material up to about the second drive roller, that's usually enough material. So at this point, we're going to cut the material off from the spool, and slowly jog the machine forward. Once you get right in front of the shear, you can stop at this point because now we're ready to install our shear dies. We will need to unplug the machine and reinstall your lockout tag out. Now I'm ready to install your shear dies. Remember when installing the shear dies to work in front of the shear or in back of the shear, never through the shear, never put any arms or anything through the shear while you're working on it. I'm gonna set the shear die up on top of the bottom die rail and look through it and line it up with the panel behind it. And then I'm gonna install the hardware. I usually install the hardware into the corresponding holes that give you the most adjustment because there will still be some minor adjustment needed side to side. Simply line up the die, the inside of the die with the inside of the metal approximately and reinstall your bolts. When ready to do the inside dies, once again, you will not be reaching through the shear. You will be working on the back side, and you are going to simply line up the shear die with the one on the exit. And then once again, you're just gonna finger tighten. Same way, we're gonna line it up with the outside and put it in to put the bolts into the same corresponding holes as the outside. Once you have your shear dies mounted and ready to run the material through, you are now needing to remove the lockout tag out again. Once you have your dies on, you're leaving them loose so the material can kind of put the dies where they need to be on their own. And then you're going to slowly bump the machine forward until the material gets approximately 12 inches out of the machine. At this point, what we're gonna have to do is unplug the machine, lock out, tag out, and then tighten up our shear dies in, in the proper position. When you're ready to tighten up your shear dies, you'll notice in the manual that it tells you to give yourself approximately a 32nd of an inch of clearance around the die itself. Center it as best as I can and snug up the shear die. Now we will come over and do the same thing on the right side. I am just finding the middle, letting it float and snugging up the dies. Once you got the inside dies out, then you can align the outside dies to the inside and snug them up. Now, if this was other profiles, like a standing seam, 
you would want this exit die away from the inside die about a 30 second inch to allow clearance for any kind of burrs or anything. I'll do the same on this side over here. Just kind of making sure we're not into anything here and snugging it up. Next, what we're gonna be doing is just making a quick test cut. Now, when once we make this test cut, we wanna make sure that the blade alignment is correct and positioned right. That way we know that everything is cutting properly. What I am looking for is the blade positioning in the, uh, the dies itself. So what we can do is I'm gonna drop the shear blade down just a little bit and I'm watching to where the point of the blade comes down because you want the point of the blade just on the inside of the tallest part of the panel. That way it could, the high part cuts with the angle and not anything else, so it slices it. Also at this point, I'm going to double check my alignment because you do not want this die, the exit dies, inside of the entry dies. If you notice on this one, it's a little bit too far in. So I'm just going to loosen it a little bit. What I did was reposition this die just so it's on the outside of the inside die. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the right side and just double check it. Which we will go ahead and move this one out just a little bit. Not much. You just want a little bit of clearance so when your panel comes back through the shear, it doesn't catch on any of the dies. So at this point, we took off our lockout tag out again. Need to go ahead and bump the material forward just to make sure that it doesn't snag on any of the shear dies. Which as you can see, uh, we didn't pop, we didn't make any noise, so we are good to go. So the next thing is we're gonna run this piece out all the way. And this is where we would measure for our dimensions and check the straightness of the panel and then make any adjustments needed necessary. For any further videos or instructions, you can check out our website at newtechmachinery.com or our YouTube channel. And if you still have further questions, you can call our service department. That concludes our changeover video for an SSR Junior machine. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in our next video. Thank you.